Good afternoon. This is Dr. Ronald Wharton from Montefiore Medical Center in the Bronx, New York. And I thought I would share with you an interesting and what I thought was an instructive case. I call this, Which Artery is Blocked? So here's the history. This is an echocardiogram obtained from a 50-year-old gentleman who came to the emergency room who had complained of the acute onset of chest pain and shortness of breath. His initial cardiac markers are normal, and he has no ischemic changes on his electrocardiogram. We see here a 2D parasternal long axis image. Grossly, the aortic and mitral valves look okay. The aorta is normal in size. The right ventricle here, at least, appears to be relatively okay. And there are no overt warm motion abnormalities in the LV in this view. This is the parasternal long axis now with color demonstrating that the aortic valve appears to have neither any stenosis nor regurgitation and there's at most mild central mitral regurgitation. Nothing particularly exciting here. This is a M mode through the antiseptum and into the mitral valve. You can see that the E-point septal separation is a little abnormal. Normally, the mitral E-point is supposed to be within six centimeters of the septum. This is a little larger, not particularly sensitive or specific, but an old and tried and true echocardiographic finding from when echo was only M-mode way back when. The septal motion appears to be grossly normal. The RV here looks okay as well. The PR interval, I believe, is slightly prolonged. You can see here a RV info view in 2D. And in this image, you can see that the tricuspid anterior and posterior leaflets are nicely demonstrated. The RV here looks perhaps a little dilated and a little hypokinetic. And here's the same image now with color. You can see here that there's some tricuspid regurgitation not a lot. It's a fairly light blue color. It doesn't look particularly turbulent. This is a short axis in the peristernal view. You can see here for the first time that the RV looks a little bigger than the LV, and there's a little septal flattening during diastole, suggesting that the RV during diastole has a sufficient volume to sort of push in a little bit onto the interventricular septum, causing it to flatten a little bit. We're now in an apical four-chamber view. This is a 2D image. You can see here that most of the LV looks pretty good. There's no overt wall motion abnormality, I don't think. The RV here looks, I think, a little bigger than the LV, which it's not supposed to do. Its contractility in this view at least looks probably normal. Not entirely sure. Could be normal. Need to look a little more. In the next slide, we have a apical two-chamber view, and I don't think there's anything really dramatic here either. Anterior wall looks like it's thickening. Inferior wall looks like it's thickening. They both look like they're thickening about the same amount. I don't think anyone would call this egregiously abnormal. So now we have a focused apical view on the right ventricle, and you can see here that the base of the RV appears to be akinetic. The RV is dilated, and even though the apex of the RV is coming in nicely, the base and the middle of the RV, if you look at the RV-free wall, appears to be akinetic. This is a continuous wave Doppler through the tricuspid valve, and you can see that the velocity here is only a little more than 2 meters per second. Maybe it's about 2.3, 2.4 meters per second. So what's going on here? If you just looked at that last image, you would say, gee, this looks a lot like McConnell's sign. You know, the RV apex is coming in, and the rest of the RV is out. That's very frequently seen in cases of acute pulmonary embolism. And maybe that's what's going on here too, right? I mean, the left ventricle looks fine, at least closely looks okay, and nothing very overtly abnormal wrong with it. The RV is dilated, except for the apex. The apex is contracting, but the base in the middle of the RV is either severely hypokinetic or akinetic, sort of splitting hairs. Looks like a PE, right? 
only problem here is that a pulmonary embolism should give you some pulmonary hypertension. Now, of course, you can always underestimate pulmonary hypertension on an echo. You don't see the TR jet exactly right. You're not precisely aligned with it. But we're not getting much more than two meters per second in the TR velocity, and that would be very, very unusual for a pulmonary embolism. So what's the explanation? Well, this patient had a coronary artery anatomy that was co-dominant. He was actually first imaged for a PE, and the PE imaging came out negative. Subsequent cardiac markers did become abnormal. He was taken to the cardiac cath lab, and what was found was that he had a mid-right coronary artery occlusion. That also accounts probably for the first degree AV block, because the AV node is usually supplied by the right coronary artery. However, there was a co-dominant system. So even though the right coronary artery was supplying the PDA, there was also a supply to that territory from the circumflex artery. So the left ventricular wall motion on the echo really didn't appear to take the hit, and the RV wall motion abnormality was not from a pulmonary embolism, but from actually an RV infarction from a right coronary artery thrombosis. I thought that was kind of cool. I hope you did too. This is Ronald Wharton from Montefiore Medical Center for the heart.org at Medscape Cardiology, and I hope you found this as entertaining as I did. Thanks very much for tuning in.